folks, and welcome to another Sunday morning's Temo Flange. I'm Matt, going solo again. Yes, yes, yes. I do have some AC, though. Thanks for everyone for their AC tips. Um, I ended up going with them. I did check for with someone else, and it was just as much, maybe more. Um, they weren't sure, but their guess was pretty much exactly what the other one was. I went back. It did take them most of the day, not all day, to fix it. Um, I feel like it's not running that cool down below, but... Again, my wife likes to turn uh, open up all the windows. Not open, I mean the window shades, which makes the side of the rooms really hot. I begged her not to do that, but you know she's not paying the electric bill, so she'll go ahead and do it. Uh, anyway, so it gets really warm in the dining room, but she uh, she has all the windows open. I mean, all the uh, shades open, and that heat is just blistering through those wind wind seals. So anyway, not the most pleasant place to be. Uh, other than that, though, AC is working just fine. Of course, Benjamin is still out, even though I wish he was here, because I'm going to go over something with him. I showed him a picture of it the other day, and he didn't say anything, so I was kind of surprised. But this is something we would be going over together <clears throat> for an entire episode if he were here. And I, I am going to do a top five. I decided to do a top five uh, energy drinks. It's going to be very brief and short and uh, straight to the point. And then maybe I'll do yeah, maybe I'll do the top five first because I want to get the top five out of the way and talk about a mini, 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 just a little itty bitty book review that uh, of a book I found just recently that Benjamin and I would have just fallen over backwards over because I, I never knew it existed. But here we go. Um, top five energy drinks for people who don't know. I love my energy drinks. Uh, I have maybe one a day, maybe, sometimes I don't, but most times I do because my kids are up all through the night. And <clears throat> it's really the only way I can wake up in the mornings when I go to work. So usually in the mornings, I, I am nursing one. And man, I granny sip them too. I mean, I granny sip the energy drink all throughout the day, and that's it. That's it. I mean, on rare cases, would I have a second one? You know, if I'm doing a late night whatever, I'll have a second one, but very rarely does that ever happen. Um, usually it's like one on the weekdays, one on working. When I'm not, not really. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe on a Sunday, get up for church and everything, I'll have one too. But uh, that's the only reason, because the kids are up. I, I used to only drink them when I was on the road, uh, so that way if we were tra traveling at night, I could have one. I can't wait to go back to those days, <laughs> to, be, <coughs> to be, oh, excuse me, to be honest, but I'm getting maybe four hours of sleep a night, you know, sometimes three, sometimes five. So it balances out about four four hours a night. You're like, how do you make it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I try I try to get to bed early, uh, one night a week. When I put the kids to bed by 8, 8.30, I'm in bed too. One night a week, I will go to bed at 8.30, and that way <clears throat> it'll kind of balance out those four-hour nights. But anyway... Uh, so what are my favorite energy drinks? Well, one of them you'll know for sure, and it is on this list. So let me go over the top five, then I'll go over this mini book review here I have. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is the old classic Red Bull. Um, I don't drink Red Bull hardly at all anymore, but this was the one I used to drink when I was on the road before I had kids. Uh, it was the one I felt like it was the best one. I, I, it's not the best tasting one at all, at all. It's not. Probably the most Red Bull I ever had consumed at one weekend was during uh, Dragon Con. Red Bull was sponsoring some of the events, and they were just giving out cans of it. Like I, I may have drank it three in one day of the big cans. Woo, that, was a, that was a big day, though. Um, that's probably the most Red Bull I've ever consumed in one uh, day there. Uh, maybe the most energy drinks I've consumed ever. Uh, maybe uh, three cans. That's a lot. But uh, anyway, uh, Red Bull's pretty good. I don't know which flavor. I'll try some of the other ones. But right now, uh, the old tried and true, well, sugar free for me is one I'll get every blue moon. Every blue moon. So not that much. But there has to be a five, right? Because we do top fives on Saturday morning salmon flange. Uh, number four is one that I get every so often when I can't find the other three, which is very rare that I can't find the other three. But if I can't find them at certain stores, you can always find a Rockstar Zero. Uh, Rockstar Zero over Red Bull every time. Uh, the Rockstar just tastes better. Uh, again, very, very rarely do they not have my top three at a store. 
So usually I'm getting one of those. But if nothing else, and you know, maybe maybe I just you know, some some grocery stores or gas stations where I'm on the road just don't have that selection. So it's just Rockstar Zero for me. Um, number four, no, number three. Excuse me. Number three is a new one on my list, and you can find it. I, I saw it everywhere, I, and I still see it everywhere. And I thought, is that any good? Venom. If you went in, Venom is the uh, I think the doctor. I think it's owned by Dr Pepper. Dr Pepper owns a lot of independent brands like RC Cola, Sunkist. A and W root beer, Squirt, Seven Up, you know all these you know off brand products. You're thinking, oh, I thought those were Pepsi products, or I thought those were Coke products. No, they're their own products, but their distributor is either Coke or Pepsi. Depends on what state you're looking at. <clears throat> and I like the, even though I, it's so weird, I hate Dr Pepper. I love RC Cola. I think RC Cola is great. Seven Up's pretty decent too. If I was to have a lemon lime drink, it would be Seven Up. Seven Up's really good. I'm I'm really shocked they don't advertise Seven Up as much as they should because I, I think it's just an excellent um you know lemon lime drink. I don't really care for lemon lime drinks, but uh, I, I remember I, there were some on sale at the grocery store. I bought a case. And I was like, hey. Seven up, not bad. I'll get it maybe again later on this year or next year for sure. It's not something I need to drink all the time, but every once in a while, a good seven up is worth it. Seven up used to be cool too. It had a little dot guy with shades. He used to be cool. So they, I don't know, they don't advertise it. And they should advertise RC. RC Cola is the perfect blend between Pepsi, which is way, which is too sweet, and Coke, which is, I don't know, something's wrong with the Coke. It's like too carbonated or something. I don't know. It just hurts going down. And I've never really been a fan of both. Between the two, I guess I'd pick Pepsi if I had to. Um, but Pepsi is just a little too sweet. RC Cola is the perfect mix. And I mean, my nephews, they were just over here today as of this recording. They went through two liters of RC Cola. I had one glass. They had several. Um, they are huge RC Cola fans. Uh, my whole family, when I <laughs> stack my fridge with RC Cola and other stuff like Diet Coke and Coke and Sprite and whatever, Dr. Pepper even, RC Cola is always the first thing to go. Always in my fridge whenever I have guests over. RC Cola is just great. It's underrated. Try an RC Cola. It'll change your life. I really think it's good. Perfect balance between the both, both two. But I'm not here talking about colas. Maybe I'll do colas next week. Um, <clears throat> here talking about energy drinks. So Venom was owned, I believe, by Dr. Pepper. And I remember someone telling me, because I was at work and someone had one, or they were, we were talking energy drinks, and I asked them about Venom. And they, I think they had maybe had one. I think that's how the conversation came up. And he said, oh, hey, yeah, you should uh, try uh, to get to get Venom and get the mango-flavored one. I was like, really? Well, Dollar Tree has them. Dollar Tree has a ton of them. And I was like, oh, okay, so a buck twenty-five. I got a mango. Excellent. Excellent. If ever I have to go to a Dollar Tree and get an energy drink, it's going to be Venom Mango. I haven't tried the other flavors. They have Fruit Punch and something else. I can't remember. Um, I'm not really a fan of Fruit Punch, but Mango? Holy cow. It was. I was really shocked how good it was. I can drink Venom Mango all day long. Um, if it not for the other two, Venom Mango is my number three, and it's a strong number three, too. It's basically the newest thing on this list. Um, I've only had one, so to speak. But like I said, when it, we don't go to Dollar Tree that much. But every once in a while, um, I'll take the girls, you know, buy them a little toy or something. And then I'll pick up, of course, a Venom Mango now. Uh, it used to be what was on my number two. Number two is the one everyone sees me drink. They know I'm a big fan of it. Bang. Bang Energy was my favorite one. Um, I got started on that back when I went to Phoenix. My uh, subject matter expert, Smee, my assistant in, the in one of the classes I taught, he was bringing bangs in to work every day. I was like, what are those? He said, they're energy drinks. So I was like, oh, okay. Let me try, I tried, tried one. <clears throat> Fell in love with them ever since. And, um, you know, I get them here and there. And then suddenly they weren't just in Phoenix. They were everywhere, even in my small town. So I started getting them. And then Bang, of course, went bankrupt because they sued Coca-Cola. They sued Pepsi. They lost both lawsuits, Pepsi and Coke. Uh, countersuit and Bang went bankrupt. Bang was like the number three energy drink or something seller in the world. I mean, it was really popular at one time. And now without Pepsi with its distribu uh, distribution, it is nowhere to be found. I mean, honestly, the only reason I still drink Bangs today, some are at Sam's. Sam's, Sam's Club has the worst 18-pack or whatever, 16-pack, whatever it is, you could buy. It has two of the best flavors, in my opinion. Nectarine Blueberry, which I love. It's one of my top four. Um, lemon Drop and Apple Crisp are just fantastic. And then the other one, uh, Lemon Drop, Apple Crisp, Nectarine Blueberry, and then the fourth one, which is in this same package of Sam's, which is called, uh, oh, no, no, I forgot, the, the some kind of mixed flavor one. Dang, Twister or something, I can't remember. But that one's a good one, too. 
And th- those are the only good ones. The other two in that pack are the wild, uh, wild and watermelon, which are which is nasty. <laughs> Yet my wife will drink it. And uh, then the last one is called blue and yellow lemon cello, which is na- It's one of the worst flavors. There's probably maybe one or two flavors, maybe only one flavor. I, uh, two flavors I would drink uh, over this one. It is so nasty. Blue and yellow lemon cello is so nasty. So, uh, but it has two of the best flavors in there, uh, too. So that's kind of a, uh, if, I, if I could just give away the blue and yellow lemon cello. I can't just throw it away. I feel like I have to drink it, but it's just so nasty. The wild and watermelon is not good either, but like I said, my wife will drink that. Um, anyway, uh, so those, those the, I, I love me some bangs. Of course, lemon drop being my ultimate favorite. That is very hard to find, that, though, now. And, oh, I like Sourhead, too. I forgot about Sourhead. Um, but also, uh, and then, then of course, Apple Crisp. Now those are very hard. But uh, besides going on Sam's, you, I, my Ollies carries them, and they carry some good flavors too. So I've been able to get some great flavors re- recently. I mean, you can get like eighteen for twenty bucks. It's like a great deal. It's like a dollar fifteen a can. And uh, my buddy, bro, Benjamin actually came by with two cases of Sourhead, one of my favorite uh, flavors. And gave it to me. I, I'll drink all of these by the end of October. <laughs> I mean, I just don't... I won't be drinking that many. I mean, a case can last me most of a month, if not a whole month. So, And again, I still granny sip them. I granny sip them early in the morning till about 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Then I'm done. The earliest I can get one down is like 1 in the afternoon. I don't know why I started doing that, but I just like sip a little bit, sip a little bit, sip a little bit all through the day. I just can't guzzle them. I cannot guzzle. Uh, maybe maybe any carbonated beverage I can't guzzle. I just granny sip, man. But uh, <clears throat> with bangs, you know, I love them, you know, number one in my heart, but not number one in taste, to be honest. There's one that's really tasty that I just discovered a, a, a year back, and I've had every flavor, and I really love them, Ghost. Ghost Energy is awesome. My sister-in-law got me hooked on them. She was bringing them down and wanted me to try uh, Sour Patch Kids, which is one of the best ones. I think uh, Sour Green Apple is my favorite. Sour Patch Kids, number two. And I don't know what's number three. I have a Bubblicious one flavor in, in my uh, fridge right now just because I hadn't seen that flavor in a while. I forgot what it was. I love Swedish Fish. The blue one is okay. The blue raspberry one's okay. Um, but most of them are pretty good. You know, I wouldn't say no. Cherry lime is really tasty, really tasty. But they're all they're all fun. I love to have them. I love to drink them. They're just so expensive. I mean, Walmart maybe the cheapest at two fifty, but two fifty. I'm like, nah. You know, most of these are two bucks that I, I, I go for or under. And uh, I have a limit, even though what's fifty cents, right, for some quality ghost. But I don't get ghosts that much. I do enjoy them, um, and I do drink those on special occasions. Uh, let's see. So th- that that's my top five. No honorable mentions. Uh, Nos. I haven't had Nos in <coughs> years. I don't remember what it tastes like. I might try it again one day. Uh, what's the other ones I see? The regular rock stars. No way. Full throttle. No way. I remember it being nasty before. Um, dang. Celsius. Someone tried. Someone maybe want to try Celsius. I did. I hated it. Oh, I hate it. It's like seltzer water. It was so nasty. So nasty. Um. I tried, what was the other one? Prime? Ugh, really flat for me. Oh, and rain. Rain is just terrible. It's so terrible. Such a terrible drink. I see that all the time. I think that's Walmart's brand. Uh, and then uh, there's Monster by Coke. Uh, my brother, <coughs> if he was on this podcast, Monster would be his number. He'd give me his top five Monster drinks because he's all about, he drinks like three or four or six Monsters a day. Um which is insane, but uh, I don't like Monster. Uh, I've tr- I just tried it again recently because he told me about a flavor I might like, and I was like, "Blah." Every time I try one, it's just nasty. I, uh, it's hard to finish them. Sometimes I don't finish them. So Monster's definitely not one that's on my list. But those are my top five. Um, like I said, Ghost being so much fun, so much fun. That Green Apple one. There's only one place to get it though, and I really wish I could get it. But other than that, though, uh, love me some energy drinks. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I don't know if that was that popular top five. I don't think Benjamin could give me a top five, but there it is. So, top five energy drinks. Let me know in the comments what's yours. All right, book mini review time. Here we go. <clears throat> now, I, as I said before, um, I wish Benjamin was here. Uh, Benjamin and I, one of our favorite shows that we love is How to Succeed in Business Without, Without Really Trying. And uh, we love this show. Uh, the movie is really great. It's from 1968 or something. 
It's super hilarious. It's a musical. It was a Broadway uh, comedy. It was a big hit. Uh, the local theater here tried to put it on. I never uh, want to be in a show. Most more likely, <coughs> getting a, a, to be be a actor in it. I like to be background. If my wife makes me do them, I'm ensemble. But uh, you know, every once in a while they'll cast me as a side character. I hate memorizing lines, and I don't ever. I've turned down a lot. Not not to brag, but I have turned down a lot of starring roles because I don't want to star in a role. It's a lot of singing, a lot of dancing. You got to lead the show. Rests on your shoulders, really. And I don't want. I don't want that responsibility. I don't want to remember that. Remember that many lines. But when it came to how succeed in business, when they when we finally and I was on the board and I pushed hard to get it on there, and I mean the the reason that it got on was because it all star in it. And uh, you know, I, now that was big words. I said if if the director will let me. And I told the director, I said, hey, look, I know this is for a young man. I'm not a young man. This is about uh, late 2019. And I said, early 2020, and you know where this is going. And I said, hey, look, uh, there's a lot of young guys out there. Cast one of them. But I always promise I would audition. And you can put me in any role, any role, any supporting role, anything you want. I'll do it. You know, I I just always promised myself I'd audition for the lead because I love it so much. Well, I got the lead. I got the lead, and she said I was far and above the other talent that was there, which is true. There were some all-stars that could have gone to auditions. They did not, and so I ended up winning. And uh, we, we were having a great time. It was about the week, the weekend it was going to go was the weekend that COVID hit, the first COVID regulation that said you can't have more than 250 gathered together. <clears throat> now, I was kind of happy at one, one, one part because, oh, now, because they, they suspended the show. They said, oh, you can, we can't have more than 250. Well, unfortunately, there's 280, 280 seats or 265 seats. I can't remember what it was in the theater. And they said, well, that's more than 250. We've sold out every show, so we can't do the show this weekend, but we'll just delay it for three weeks because that's what the government said at first, right? Three weeks, and then you can go back to normal. And so everyone went, okay, that's great. Well, when it came to me, and I was like, okay, there, there you go. Uh, th- this is this is awesome. So I'll wait three weeks. Well, I was happy because I got to go to my cousin's wedding that weekend, which I told her I couldn't. I was so upset because it was in uh, Jackson, I think, or Vicksburg. I can't remember where. I think it was in Jackson, Mississippi. But there's no way we could have made it there and made it back in time for the show. And I didn't want to take the risk because, you know, if there's a wreck on the highway, I'm the lead. I cannot be, it'd be irresponsible for me to be out of town. So... I was I was very happy. I went to my cousin's uh, wedding. It was right before you know everyone was talking about the pandemic back then. They didn't know it was a pandemic. They said, "Hey, this. What do you think about all this?" Because only two hundred and fifty, you know, or you know, less could gather together, and so no one was wearing masks back then. It was so great. It was life normal one last time. And like I said, it's one of the most memorable weddings I've ever been to. Um, all of my cousins on one side. That entire family has had some of the best weddings. Uh, I've only missed one of them that I thought weren't bad. So. Anyway, uh, but I have succeeded in business without really trying. Never made it off the ground. Uh, I ended up having to dismember the set on my own. Did it on my own. And, uh, yeah, it was it was not fun. It was kind of a sad day. No one came to help because everyone was scared of the pandemic. And they thought, you know, that COVID would kill you. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you, I guess if you showed up to do some work and just dismantle the set, it would kill you. So everyone stayed sheltered in. Well, I dismantled the set piece by piece on my own, which wasn't easy. Really tough getting some of those big pieces off. And because uh, every day we did a they, – they, they said, hey, everyone, come on and help us clean up. No one showed up but me. And, I mean, only me. So, uh, anyway, uh, other than that, though – uh, I cleaned it up. We never did it again, and my hopes were dashed. But it doesn't matter because uh, a friend of mine, Geeks Attic from YouTube, uh, was we were doing. I can't remember what we were doing. We may, maybe even after a stream we did together, he was showing me a bunch of bargain books he bought. You know, you put, throw a bunch of books in the bag, pay ten bucks. And he says his little his little son came in and threw a bunch of books in the bag, and he didn't know what they were, and he was kind of showing me what they were, and we were laughing together about all these random books that he was just going to throw away. And one of them happened to be. How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, the book. And I was like, wait a minute, show me that? I said, open it up. See, the whole thing about the show is this guy called Ponty, Pierpont, uh, Finch, uh, Pierpont Finch, is you know basically smoozing his way through corporate America. He gets a job at, in the mailroom and then rises up to be the CEO of the company within no time because he's reading this little handy-dandy book about how to maneuver the waters. It's basically a comedy making fun of you know the corporate... Um, 
uh, life and whatnot, and how no one pays attention. It's all about bluffing to get your way to the top. And he's reading all these ridiculous, you know, he's reading chapter after chapter of all these ridiculous, uh, you know, advice. Well, this is the book about that book. I mean, it, it shows, it has quotes from the movie as examples, it says, and it has little caricature cartoons, which I think are funny too. But then it's a lot of the stuff from the book, uh, from the uh, from the movie, about what he was reading, and then it's added. They added more in there because this is hilarious. And uh, this is a very quick read. I think it's 159 pages. It's a very quick read, and it's like a little digest book, paperback. And you're laughing. And a lot of these, and by the way, when I say 159, remember, a lot of these are, there's a lot of pictures involved here. So you can cut it down to maybe a third. So let's say 100 and something pages, maybe total. And it's, it, like I said, very easy to read. I, I want to say the font seems a little bit bigger too. So it, it'll take you maybe a couple of hours to read, maybe two hours to read, and that's it. But it's so funny. I was laughing the whole time. And some of it, <clears throat> it's a little outdated about how you dress and stuff and where your pencil holder should go in your coat, coat pocket, your handkerchief, your whatever, tweed uh, suit and whatnot. But one of them, and, and I mean, if this, if Benjamin and I had the time, I think we'd go through each one of these. And I, I know Benjamin would want to read it out. But um, there's one in here, and I, and I lost my place. I did not mean to do that. Um, like it says, hey, now you're a junior executive. Congratulations. You can go to the next chapter. And the next chapter is how to stop being a junior executive. That's hilarious. Um, and, oh, man, I closed the book when I missed my spot in here. So I wanted to talk about, because <clears throat> I work for a big company too, and I snicker a little bit at some of these things. But one of them is so spot on. And it's funny because this is written probably in the 60s. And even today, even today, uh, some of this stuff is true. Here it is, Chapter 7, The Meeting is a Must. And it talks about the utter pointlessness in meetings. Now, folks, no one sings that this, the praise that I do about this being an amen on this because this is, I hate meetings. I hate meetings. Meetings are usually, usually a waste of time for me. Um, they're, they go more than double the time they're needed to. And I would say a good... Oh, let me be fair. 85% are worthless. It's a good 15% of the meetings are good. But get this. Okay, so it says it, during a meeting, by the way, your first book, I'm, I'm skipping around here, but it says never be for a loss for words. Okay? Um, you know, uh, get, it's wise to prepare a series of little talks complete with gestures and a few fo- jolly antidotes. You know, and it gives you a few examples here. But that that is, you just want to speak, right? Just make sure you speak a little bit. That's all. <clears throat> you make sure you speak and you talk a little bit, and that's really all that's important. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you say. And so it also says be decisive. Um, you know, uh, you know, make make up your mind whether whether you're whether you're clear or not. Be decisive. I don't know about that one. Um, let me think about this. Well, yeah, you have your way of the highway. This is the only way? Maybe. That may not be true today. Also, it says, but avoid decision. Well, I mean, so I guess I should have reread this before going. I, I just reread I read the whole book, and I wanted to go back to this chapter for this one. Avoid making a decision. Be so decisive when you say something, which is true. You know, say, I like this, and this is why. Uh, but also when it says avoid making a decision, holy cow. Holy cow. I, I have several meetings that I do at work. There is one. They never make a true decision. They always got to rethink, reimagine. Those are the key words there. One thing after the next. One thing after the next. They got to reimagine. And it's hilarious, though, because there's no decision makers there. No decision making there. Let's just, let's just look in it. Let's kick it down the road. Let's mold it around for the next meeting and whatnot. It also says there's the uh, sleeper play. It says never speak first. Let others talk themselves out and then slowly come to action. And just say, like, you know, I've heard everything that you've said, and I've been listening to this, and I think from my insight, here's what I know. And and then it says, and say the exact thing you were going to say in the first place. Sorry, I had to hit pause and come back real quick. <coughs> I have several kids crying. They're not going to sleep. <clears throat> I'm the only one who watches them at nights um, for about <coughs> the hours of 4.30 when I get home to 10 o'clock. And one refuses to go to bed and has been crying here for mama. You're probably catching in the background. We finally put a stop to it. But, uh, yeah, aggravating. <laughs> My part-time job, five and a half hours alone with the kids, four kids, every night, every weekday, and then eight hours on Saturdays from 8 to 
<coughs> about four, no, about five. It's five, eight to five. So while my all wife is off hanging out with her theater friends. <coughs> so yeah, Woo! And I know what Mr. Mom feels like. But anyway, uh, I cannot remember where I was on my thing, and I lost my place again. But, oh, yeah, the sleeper, which I thought was hilarious, because that is exactly, that is exactly right. You just sit there, wait for everyone to talk, and then act like you've been listening to everyone, and then just say what you were going to say anyway. That is so true. I, I, I kept looking at the, reading each, each bullet point here and laughing so hard. I just thought, I thought it was so funny, because I said, man, this is still relevant today. Um, <clears throat> the other one, it says, uh, the if George were only here device, Basically, someone said, you know, if George were only here, I'm sure he'd agree that, you know, you just, just say someone who's missing from the meeting, say that, just say that they would agree with you. I don't use this one. I don't know of anyone who does. You know, that kind of fell flat on me. But the next one is an all-out attack, sweeping the meeting off its feet. Basically, you're just, you know, trying to charge people up by getting mad or angry or, or rallying the troops without really saying anything. Like, come on, guys, we got to pull together. Come on, we got to get this. I mean, guys, we've been focused on this long enough. It's time to do it, but you don't make a decision. I've seen people do that in my meetings, but <clears throat> I've never done it. They also have the underplay. You kind of act like you're hurt, you know, like, you know, no one's really listening to you. Of course, that's the exact opposite of the offensive one on six. This is something that no one ever does. And the filler buster is the eighth one, and this is just great. Um, yeah, uh, basically, uh, it says, let me see, uh, this is the only value when the opponent has to make a, oh, okay, so because I read 50 or 60 letters. All right, so you read something off that's more or less, and more or less, more or less, related to the subject, okay? Uh, so it's something that's kind of on topic, but kind of off and doesn't make sense. You kind of just go off on a tangent all the time, all the time. I see this happen. I've even done it. I've even, there's one meeting, they refuse to let us out early. We have to stay for the full hour. And everyone's got to say something. So I've done this. I've said, hey guys, this reminds me of something I read recently. And then I go off. It's somewhat pertaining to the subject matter, but mainly not. Just, it's more generic or vague. But everyone's sitting there, mmm, mmm. Matt is talking and using words. So true. So true. This is so hilarious. Uh, number nine is the uh, the meeting lever. Say you have to leave early. You know you have to duck out early. Sorry, I've done that. Once the moment hits to the minute of the hour, it says, "Hey, does anyone have? If y'all have five extra minutes, if not, I understand. It's like, yeah, I, I gotta go. I got another meeting. I'm so sorry. I do that every time. But you you may have to leave early and say, "I'm sorry, I got something." And I have done that as well. I gotta be at a meeting, so I got a jet. You can't really do that on Zoom, but when you're doing live meetings, you always say, "Hey, I gotta get out ten minutes early. I got another meeting to catch." Yeah, all the time. The the early meeting lever. Love it. And then number 10, the final one, be beware of the do it now or, you know, don't don't be saying, "Well, let's do it now. Let's make the decision now." Which is true too. I mean, cuz no one likes to do that. But I love this at the end it says, "And regardless of what you've accomplished, even if you accomplished nothing in your meeting, you always you always tell everyone that was a good meeting." And that is so true. So many I, like I said, there's one committee I'm on at work for the past I've been on it for almost two years now uh, it'll be two years uh, October I think or September holy cow Ho no I have been on it two years now I think oh I can't remember <clears throat> no it'll be two years into this year I think either way though they've accomplished zero nada nothing zilt zilch uh, just nothing has been done Nothing has been done. We've been rethinking and reimagining everything that we thought about last year for 2023. We are still doing that, and it's June, folks, and we're still doing it. Nothing gets accomplished in these meetings ever. We run around and say the same things. We pick apart the same things. We just look at something else and then pick it apart again and deconstruct it and then reconstruct it again. Nothing gets done, but every time we always say, <clears throat> good meeting, good meeting, got a lot done. You gotta say that, or else you feel like you wasted your time. So true, so relevant today. How to succeed in business without really trying the novel, not to the play, but the novel that the play was kind of based around. Really enjoyable read. I don't know if there's another chapter that sticks out to me. 
um, that I can think about. Maybe I'll read that over too. I really wish Benjamin was here. He didn't say anything when I sent him a picture of it. But again, he is super busy right now, so I can understand if he did, didn't have the time to respond back. But I know he and I would have had a field day with this because there's some other funny stuff here and there. But that whole chapter on meetings, spot on today today. Let me know if any of that was like your meetings, the worthless meetings you go to from time to time at your work. And I'll see you next time on Saturday Morning Simul Flange.